Here's an idea. Doctor Who is a religion. And for anyone who's worried, we promise this episode is spoiler free. Doctor Who is a television show produced by the BBC. It stars the Doctor. Many people have played the Doctor, who is a Time Lord, which is an alien. He can travel through time and space. He does this in a police call box, which is actually a spaceship. It's called the TARDIS, and along with him on his adventures to pretty much and literally everywhere and every when, he brings companions. People he happens upon, people who happen upon him, and to whom he takes a liking. And so they accompany him while time traveling through space. I see you're still with us. Good. One of the most interesting things about Doctor Who, other than all the alternate universes, the alien races, and the fact that the sonic screwdriver seems to be able to do just about anything, is the fan base, which is... <clears throat> large. HUGE! The Doctor Who fandom, made up of Whovians, shares many characteristics with other fandoms. They have an awesome remix culture, dedicated cosplayers, tons of fan art, and of course, the occasional power struggle. But there is one thing that sets Whovians apart from all other fandoms. Whovianism might just be a religion. In the West, at least, most of us have this very specific idea that comes to mind when someone says religion, something that's decidedly not an English guy with an impossible chin. We tend to think of going to a big, nice building where someone tells you a story from a very old, important book about a powerful man in the sky. His son turns out to be pretty well-liked, having H-E-double hockey sticks the whole nine yards. But religion doesn't begin and end with big dudes in the sky. There are thousands of religions with origins and customs miles apart that exist and have existed throughout the world. Buddhism, for for example, emphasizes the ideas not of a god or prophet, but a teacher and philosopher. Hinduism is a monist religion that also supports polytheism, pantheism, and even atheism. And the Baha'i faith, with almost 8 million followers, believes in the unity not only of all humanity as one race, but also all religions. The anthropologist Clifford Geertz defined religion as a system of symbols which acts to establish powerful, pervasive, and long-lasting moods and motivations in men by formulating conceptions of a general order of existence. This general order is another way of saying cosmology, a method for understanding the universe. It's a way of answering the biggest and most intimidating questions like, why does evil exist? What do we do about it? And what is humanity's purpose? So whatever the differences between all of the world's religions, they all provide this one very important thing. But as it turns out, so might Doctor Who. So while DW is just a television show, it, more than many other television shows, has a strong and complete set of symbols which can sort of Voltron into a cosmology a universal cosmology that covers the universe, literally. For starters, the Doctor is, in effect, a supernatural force of capital G, good, and he's known throughout time and space. He loves humanity and is invested in their success. He fights alongside them and is their sworn protector. He provides humanity agency in a larger universe and is provided agency by them. To the Daleks, who are essentially evil incarnate, his nemesis, he is the destroyer of worlds, the thing most threatening, most terrifying. The Doctor is, or could be anywhere, at any point. He keeps tabs, acts as a universal arbiter, and can be called upon in times of need. He travels with and teaches his companions, upon whom he has profound effects, both positive and negative. He shows them the beginning of the universe, the end. He answers questions humanity never could. And while the Doctor does provide humanity with new experiences, like children, we provide him the opportunity to view super space timey stuff anew. His is a philosophy that values experience above everything else. Add to this the fact that his death and regeneration are a constant theme, that the TARDIS is, in effect, an architectural manifestation of all of his abilities and beliefs, and the fact that whatever the Doctor's true name is, it is never spoken. I heard it's and this particular mythos and collection of symbols really begins to coalesce into what Geertz might call a general order. Okay, but there is tons of media that features heroic figures, evildoers that postulates origins of the universe. Why aren't I making an episode about how Prometheus is a religion? Easy, because Prometheus was bad. Nah, just kidding. It's because of the fans. Sociologist Emil Durkheim said that it is in the midst of effervescent social environments and out of this effervescence itself that the religious idea seems to be born. And if effervescent doesn't describe the Who fandom, I don't know what does. Now, let me be clear. I don't think that people are going to start building callbox-shaped shrines, if they haven't already. Or that Whovians are going to start intoning wibbly wobbly timey rhymey as some kind of invocation. And I don't think that everyone in the Who fandom is like suddenly a missionary. You can be an atheist scientist Whovian. Those cosmologies are not mutually exclusive. What I do believe, though, is that the media we consume, especially in 2012 o'clock, double plus impacts our worldview. Even more so than whatever actual religion, if any, you were raised with. 
unless you were raised Jedi, in which case I don't really know what to say. Take a look around Tumblr or other parts of the internet. The number of people who have been deeply affected by the doctor is not insignificant. Fans say things like, and I quote here, the doctor gives me a reference point for my own life and my own ethics. So while Doctor Who is a television show, its cosmology is certainly as clear as, say, Scientology's, if not a little clearer, though they do both involve a lot of aliens. Doctor Who explicitly encourages exploration, evidence, do-goodery, collaboration. It shows, sometimes through the Doctor's own struggles with morality, that while responsibility is hard, especially in the face of universally heaped time-altering suckitude, that's also how you learn and grow. And if it doesn't work out, you'll probably just regenerate. What do you guys think? Can Whovianism be a religion? And if you've had a religious experience watching Doctor Who, we want to know about it. Let us know in the comments. And if you're not already subscribed, don't worry. It's taken care of. MP3s and magical spells, or just a reason to go on and on about piracy. Let's see what you guys had to say about last week's episode. Baby Fark McGee's Axel and a bunch of other people pointed out that the connection between MP3s and spells might be a little bit tenuous, but I stand behind it. And maybe I'll use this as an excuse to start a Tumblr to respond to you guys a little bit more and also post a million animated GIFs. So keep your eyes out. Plastic Chopstick user points out John Green's attitude about books belonging to their readers. And I would love to know what John thinks about people downloading his books. I'm sure he said it somewhere. I just haven't seen the video, but I'm sure it's very nuanced and interesting. There was a really great post on Engadget about last week's episode too. We'll put a link in the description. And uh, in the comment thread on there, Digital Wolf asks, what's with PBS showing all these young people talking about things? I know, right? Fair enough, Mosher's music, fair enough. Though, fair use didn't come up in the comments nearly as much as I thought it would. I choose bacon a la mode. Capcana makes the point that culture should be free because if culture is freely available, people will be able to reference it and remix it, and then that will make more culture, which is very exciting. But then Dark Renegade Eye takes the opposite view and says that if you don't pay for it, then the people who are making it won't have any incentive to make more. But then points out that Rihanna and Lady Gaga are super rich, which they are. Oh my gosh, It's a Leg predicts a time when people are able to pirate actual objects because of the prevalence of 3D printers and 3D files, which is really interesting and something that the Society for Public Knowledge, if you know them, are doing really interesting legal work and uh, like writing white papers and stuff about. You should check it out. The Elder Superior, a spellcaster themselves, points out that a lot of things go into casting and making spells, including money, but that there is also a deeply personal aspect to it, which is an interesting interplay. You're on to us, Acid Pack. Our next episode is gonna be about Captain Crunch and post-Fordism. Nah, just kidding, we get all our ideas from John Smith.